Hey, 42 here. Healers, priests, hedge witches, shamans, apothecaries, and your nan have known since the caveman first shoved his hand into a beehive that bee stings bloody hurt. But now it's official. Yes, that and honey is good for you. A recent meta study by Oxford academics found that honey is better for treating coughs and colds or for respiratory tract infections than antibiotics. And according to a slightly less insightful study, it turns out bee stings are indeed painful. The most painful place to be stung by a bee is on your penis, presuming you have one. I very much doubt that any woman would have the balls, or shall we call it curiosity, to give it a go. When scientists aren't throwing beehives at naked people to see what happens, they're usually seeking approval for some new miracle cure. And in 2018, Public Health England recommended that honey should be prescribed before antibiotics for coughs and colds. Previous to that, in 2007, the FDA approved MediHoney, a honey-based gel used for wound treatment. But certain truths are self-evident, and just as most people know it's a bad idea to get stung on your private parts, humans have known about the medicinal properties of honey for as long as we've been sticking our fingers and other curious parts into holes. Thousands of years of honey wisdom has been gleaned through the trial and error process known as history. Or as I like to call it, let's see what happens if we rub this on our nipples. And what did our ancestors discover? That honey is magic. In a world with no antibiotics, it was often the most effective and only cure for any number of ills. And therefore, it was highly prized and sometimes worshipped. We have records from the ancient Sumerians and Egyptians, recipes for salves and other remedies, many of which are based on or use honey. Ayurvedic medicine, an ancient Indian form of healing, uses it to aid everything from vomiting to obesity, stress, jaundice, stomach ulcers, and much more. It was often left in tombs for the dead to take with them to the afterlife, showing how highly it was valued. There's even a 15,000 year old cave painting in Spain of a man climbing a tree and harvesting honey from a beehive. No penises were depicted, or one hopes harmed in this endeavor. The Greeks went even further and worshiped it as nectar of the gods. Well, the Greek gods were always a bit weird. Cleopatra is reputed to have bathed in honey. Some cultures even mellified their dead, which is the practice of steeping the dead in honey to preserve them. A 16th century Chinese doctor wrote that the Arabic people took it one step further. In a unique twist on old age social care, elderly Arabic men sacrificed themselves for their descendants. As they neared the end of their life, they supposedly gave up food and drink only consumed honey and bathed in it. Then, when death finally came, they were mellified in stone coffins. A hundred years later, they were exhumed, their bodies having decomposed and mixed with the honey. This corpse-infused honey was then used to heal wounds, fractures, and limbs, with only a small amount taken internally for the cure. So that's all right then, not disturbing in the slightest. What is disturbing is the story, though perhaps a legend, of an archaeologist who unearthed two sealed earthenware jars full of pre-Hellenistic honey at a dig in northern Israel. He tasted the honey, which was apparently quite good. But then, as he dug a little deeper, what he discovered made him rather regret his ancient amuse bouche. In the bottom of the jar were the bones of an infant child. Sweet. That's rather vomit inducing, if you ask me. Do you know what else is vomit induced? Honey. That's right. Honey is little more than vomit. Bee vomit. The honey making process starts with scavenger bees collecting nectar and pollen from flowers, then transporting it back to the hive as they start to digest it. Here, they regurgitate it 
passing it on to the worker bees, who repeatedly consume, semi-digest, and vomit it up again and again and again, until, finally, somehow, they sense it's ready. That, or they're just sick of the whole process. Finally, they fan it with their wings to evaporate the last of the water, and then top it with a layer of beeswax to seal it into the honeycomb for a nice tasty treat in the winter months. Unless, of course, a wandering beekeeper, scientist, caveman, or penis pops by to steal it. It's a bizarre and convoluted procedure involving complicated chemical processes, but put simply, honey is the combined vomit of many different bees. In the past, stealing honey usually meant killing the bees and destroying their home. That was until 1814, when Ukrainian Petro Prokopovich invented the first prototype for a wooden hive frame. And ever since, we've been able to humanely farm honey without causing too much disruption to the little guys. But it is this mysterious process powered by the enzymes in bee stomachs that semi-digest the nectar, which grants honey its unique qualities. By repeatedly digesting it and drying it over and over, the bees create a super-saturated solution that contains more dissolved material than the solvent, in this case the water, can dissolve. As a result, honey is not only anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and antibacterial, but also has a variety of other health benefits. It's rich in antioxidants, which are thought to ward off heart attacks, strokes, and even some types of cancer. It may improve cholesterol levels. It reputedly reduces ulcers and gastrointestinal disorders, and can heal wounds and burns. It's even slightly antiviral and has proved effective when applied to cold sores, which are caused by the herpes virus. Honey can impede the growth of E. coli, Salmonella, and MRSA, the famous antibiotic-resistant hospital bug. One of the reasons honey is so hard to understand is that there are many different types, with a variety of properties and effects, all dependent on the type of nectar and pollen used to produce the honey. Honey can be made from a single flower, unifloral, or a combination of many different flowers. You guessed it multi-floral. It can be raw, straight from the beehive, or pasteurized, heated and strained to eliminate bacterial or fungal contamination. Some types of honey are toxic and can kill you. Some can make you fly, or at least make you think you can fly. It all depends where the bees get their pollen. You can have lavender, rosemary, buckwheat and clover honey though the most common honey is a mix of many different pollen. As a rule of thumb, dark honey is generally higher in antibacterial and antioxidant properties than the lighter varieties. One of them, Manuka, is one of the most prized in the world. It's made in New Zealand, and top quality Manuka can sell for six pounds per gram. But the prize for most expensive honey goes to elvish honey. Supremely rare and found in a deep Turkish cave, it goes for £41 per gram. It's reputed to have extraordinary health benefits due to the rich mineral content in the cave and the medicinal plants in the surrounding area. And the stuff that can make you fly? That's the aptly named mad honey. Made from the poisonous rhododendron plant in Turkey and the Himalayas, it has hallucinogenic and psychoactive properties. Nepalese honey hunters scale vertical cliff faces to harvest it, whilst enduring a hundred brutal bee stings. A Greek army got off their tits on mad honey in 410 BC, when, according to Xenophon's Anabasis, on an expedition into Persian territory, they came upon a village with lots of beehives and gorged on it. Some went mad, seemingly intoxicated. Others appeared on the point of death. They all fully recovered the following day, and presumably remembered they were there to stab Persians, not to get high. 
But the bad news for you honey lovers out there is that whilst honey is effective when applied externally, its health benefits are significantly less once digested. Your stomach acid rapidly denatures most of the beneficial molecules. It certainly won't cure COVID, and since about 10% of honey contains botulism, the deadliest toxin known to man, a teaspoon of it can kill an infant, but not an adult. So then, why did your mother shove a teaspoon of honey down your throat when you had winter sniffles? Well, mother knows best, and she might have been onto something. Before it hits the stomach, honey coats your throat and esophagus as it slips down, thus treating upper respiratory tract infections. Honey has consistently beaten off-the-shelf cough suppressants and antihistamines to ease coughs and sniffles in a number of clinical studies. Honey's antibacterial properties may prove to be humanity's saviour in the decades to come. Every year, antibiotic resistance becomes an increasingly pressing issue. The WHO estimates antibiotic resistance superbugs could kill over 10 million per year by 2050. A pioneering team at the University of Birmingham are working on a range of honey-based sprays, creams, and a powder that will be able to treat infections and kill bacteria, even those that fail to respond to modern antibiotics. The powder is particularly exciting because when mixed with water, it creates a gel that can be used in war zones. Why is the team especially interested in repurposing honey and not developing new antibiotics instead? Because humans have been using it to treat infections for over 8,000 years. And unlike modern medicine, bacteria has never been able to evolve a resistance to it. It's just as effective now as it was when Caveman first smeared it on his sore nipple. Furthermore, despite their best efforts, scientists have been unable to engineer bacteria that is resistant to honey in the lab. This is because honey doesn't work like any other antibiotic. As already mentioned, honey is a super saturated solution. It has absorbed more sugar than should be possible for the volume of water it contains. This means honey is absolutely craving more water. And what does bacteria contain? That's right, a good dose of water. Therefore, when honey contacts a bacterium, it rapidly sucks all the water out, neutralizing it. Since this is a mechanical process, bacteria has never found a way to evolve a natural defense against it. And there's a good chance it never will. Except for the botulism spores we mentioned earlier, which only exist in honey because they're already dried out. So there's no water for the honey to extract. But pretty much everything else doesn't stand a chance. And yes, its ability to exterminate bacteria like a gloopy, sticky Dalek is what gives honey its eternal shelf life. So then, it turns out honey is magic after all. Thanks for watching. I'm very pleased to announce that today is the release day of the audiobook version of Sticker Flag in It. You can go to the link in the description to listen to it right now on Audible. Thank you.